This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Thank you for having tuned back into uh, Human Humane Architecture, Think Tech Hawaii, on Tuesdays here in our exotic tropical paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii, which for an increasing number uh, becomes uh, paradise in peril. And uh, to talk about that today, we have a special guest who comes all the way from Indonesia to be with us, and uh, we're talking about similarities and differences about challenges and potential we're facing in our tropical um, urban uh, areas. And this is Antonio Recianto. Thank you, Antonio, for being with us in the show. Aloha, aloha. And coming all the way from, from your home. So if we can get uh, picture number one, uh, please, that is what we agreed upon how basically to call the show. And we call it poor people's paradises, and you added a question mark to that, which is more than more than appropriate. And number two is actually uh, illustrating. Uh, image number two is illustrating. Um, you're actually here as part of a, a symposium that is organized by the East West Center, and I was snapping you away and stealing you <laughs> out of your program. And thank you for doing this. And so we had to drive up to Waipahu. And uh, we were basically coming uh, the way back, and that gave you the chance to basically look at our spectacular skyline of uh, Honolulu downtown and Waikiki in the background and Kaka'ako to grow, which is one of the largest skylines in the US. We actually have the fourth largest skyline, something like 460 something uh, high rises. And, and this is something that you point out, this is happening in Asia right now, and many who aren't in Asia look increasingly at Asia the way we look at the slide right now. But we want to talk about the other side of, uh, of development and being underdeveloped and underdevelopment, and this is illustrated by the, by the next slide, which I pass it on to you to explain what's behind these images, Antonio. Uh, yes, I mean, if you see, if you see uh, most uh, tourism magazines uh, in Asia, you, you see probably all the good things, you know, the, and the glittering high-rise, uh, anything to do with, with beauty. Mm -hmm. But if you see behind the scene of a lot of the Asian countries, uh, Asian cities, uh, you will see this poverty, mm -hmm. uh, slums, uh, and pollution. Uh, and this is something that we, we are working on, uh, as how to deal with the urbanization in Asia uh, that is rapidly growing, and how we can solve this uh, to, to help people that's living in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're in, in deep poverty, and, uh, and I think a lot of the government doesn't really uh, deal with, with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We can go to the next slide, um, which you also kindly prepared and nicely sort of captioned. And this is also extracts from uh, some of the presentations you just gave at the symposium, right? Right. So it, it, this is just to show uh, about cities that doesn't give uh, attention to the, to the majority of the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, their space, they, they do need space, but they were not given space. So most of the poor are living in the, in the edge of rivers or even in the, in, on top of cemeteries. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, if you read in there, it's like uh, their space is basically at the edge of for falling down mm -hmm. earth. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is rather literally and figuratively speaking, obviously, yes, right? Yes, yes. And going to the next uh, image. <clears throat> so the, this, well, the first image is actually uh, the situation inside the city, mm -hmm. uh, where the city doesn't doesn't create or provide spaces for the poor. Uh, and this is basically another image of the outside of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, even the outside of the city, the the private developers are are building. Uh, Housing, real estate, uh, and, and and basically like wiping out 
uh, existing communities, mm -hmm. indigenous uh, mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. So ba basically, uh, the title there says like what you know what what happened with the existing existing uh, villages. Mm -hmm. And that's, there, there are many similarities here to just on the way here from Waipahu where we're talking about that. We, we drove by the heavy rail that just, you know, in the, in the making and we talk about transit-oriented development and we talk about gentrification, right? We walked through Chinatown and you see all that stuff. I mean, we're both sort of, you know, have decided for the better or the worse to be cultures who thrive on, on capital, right, on consumerism, on profit, and these are the downsides of that, of that decision, right, we're talking about. And go to the next picture, you got another sort of very provocative, polemic uh, proposition. Yeah, so, so this is a, basically a picture of uh, the outskirt of central cities where the developers are buying out all, all the villages. Mm -hmm. uh, so this actually show uh, villages being wiped out uh, and the only thing that's left is there is the school. <laughs> and the developer cannot really buy a sco the school because the school is owned by the government. Mm -hmm. So it's a public land. So that's the only thing that's left. So there's a school with no students. Wow. So this, this is like a, a, a picture of wiping out uh, communities, mm -hmm. low-income communities, uh, indigenous communities mm -hmm. uh, in the outskirts of the cities, yeah, the growing cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't make this more radically obvious as, as visualizing us. So to the next uh, slide we go, and you have these awesome, I think, cartoonish kind of manga yeah, and illustrations I, that make it rather clear. Yeah. I, I think this this actually shows uh, maybe in general is happening all over the world, or maybe more in developing countries. Uh, about well, I I wrote it over there. It's actually like the human the human greed, mm -hmm. uh, where business is basically dominating uh, development, uh, exploiting anything they can get. So, for example, the the nature, the forest. Mm -hmm. uh, they, the they want to make business out of anything. Uh, unfortunately, it will be mostly uh, exploitative. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one that's left out is basically that people there in that circle, which is the poor. Mm -hmm. And they also need uh, resource, uh, but it's getting smaller and smaller. And, and that's the, the people that we are Actually, what we are uh, focused is actually more the people, the poor people, and also the, the, the environment. Yeah, yeah. So the next picture. So we're talking about the underserved, right? Because, you know, when you talk about Indonesia, and you talked about the general perception of Indonesia, this is people conventionally, the, you know, say, Bali, oh, great. This is going to be my dream vacation. I'm going to be in my <laughs> little ecotourist hut, right? I'm going to feel good. But this is not, well, others take care of that, right? I mean, you're basically the advocate for the little people and the underserved, um, which are being cut out by, uh, you talk about the 99% and the 1% and that sort of inequity. Mm -hmm. We talked on the way here where we walking by, you know, homeless communities, so to speak, that were informally basically um, forming themselves here along the roads that we were walking that that the poor people, you know, they will not go away. And they will eventually, as history have, has, has shown, they will speak up and they will basically rebel up. And then in the history that has been revolution and, and there has been uh, civil wars and stuff like that. So these are sort of, you know, um, basically um, proactive um, uh, interventions that you guys are basically proposing. And you use that term that's very familiar to me I'm very sympathetic about that inclusive, that model of inclusiveness. So tell us more about that, Antonio. Yeah, actually, the 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 program that I'm I'm here with uh, East Van Center is, is the subject is actually how do you handle uh, the rapid urbanization that is going on in where I guess almost everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, but probably more more so in the develop uh, yeah. developing countries. Uh, and the issue of uh, poverty is a big problem. Uh, and Habitat 3 is a, a 
is actually a statement from the UN, mm -hmm. where it's agreed by many countries about how do we build the cities. Uh, and one of the subjects is actually what they call in inclusive city. Uh, basically, is is uh, about whether the poor can also live in the city. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether the question is actually whether the city is only for the rich mm -hmm. and the poor is, has to be outside. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And if we do this, uh, it will be a, a problem. Yeah, I'm going to the next page. And I I'm, I'm really appreciate what you're saying as far as our condition. Where we are seeing a lot of high-end luxury development here in Kaka'ako. And then, you know, there is some, you know, care for the of for the so the middle class the affordable we talk affordable housing but this mm -hmm. is still we're talking about the half million range this is still absolutely unaffordable for too many so do, how do we house the underserved right how do we really i mean and the way you say it you don't have a problem uh which i appreciate calling it poor so how do we deal with poor people and giving them dignity right and decency as far as dwelling yes yes uh, so, so if you look at this picture, it's actually um, it's, it's a picture of uh, um, a competition. Uh, so for example, I mean, if you see there's a table, and the, the table actually represents uh, a city. Mm -hmm. uh, and all around the, sit around the table is all the, the stakeholders, the players. Mm -hmm. So there's the, the um, the central government, mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, and there's the businessmen, the bankers, private sectors. And on the right side, uh, you will see the people, the, the informal people, the marginal uh, folks mm -hmm. that doesn't have the power, uh, for example, the, lo the lobby power uh, or bargaining power for them to, be, to exist in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. So I put that red dot uh, close to that in the circle that's that's basically uh, what we are doing as mm -hmm. uh, as an entity, mm -hmm. uh, kind of helping the people to be part of the. Uh, I, I call it like basically like the urban game, mm -hmm. so they can also exist uh, inside the, mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm. I, I will make this a viewing assignment for my uh, emerging generation of architects that I have the privilege to work with and. David Rockwood and myself are basically encouraging them to sort of do research the manga way. So the, exactly mm -hmm. the way you do it, you illustrate, you know, human activity and events. So it's, it's way more clear for us that it's not about pretty pictures, it's not about surface, it's about substance and it's about people's basically authorship, uh, authorship and, and taking, becoming an, in charge again of, of their actions. So I, I really, applaud you for that this is uh, this is really good let's jump to the next picture and just briefly uh, you know talk about another issue that both are sort of coastal uh, you know ocean cities and cultures face right yeah be, be, this this picture actually show show an, a big issue that uh, that we face Actually, we, we means probably more uh, countries that is uh, uh, island-based, small mm -hmm. island-based. Mm -hmm. uh, and the problem of climate change where the water start rising. Uh, and if, if uh, you know Indonesia, most, most of Indonesian uh, uh, settlements mm -hmm. are at the coastal or mm -hmm. even on the river, mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of the major cities are actually already under under the the waters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we have to deal with this. Yeah, I mean, un unfortunately, uh, the current law of the the Indonesian law is like all settlements that's living uh, next to the waters are regarded as illegal. Mm -hmm. And if we we go to the next picture, and we we got to speed up a little bit, whereas we here in Hawaii feel this sort of marginality, a couple of you know landowners at the North Shore, they feel the king tides, what they call it, and we got a little less beach here in Waikiki, but pretty much, it's still pretty unnoticeable for the general public. But that is different mm -hmm. uh, with you guys, right? As this picture sort of very dramatically shows. I mean, this this is just uh, one project that we did. Uh, it's 
It's actually a, a slum uh, on water, and we, we re revitalized uh, uh, with the new, new housing development. Mm -hmm. We, we might want to look into that too, and the next picture illustrates that very beautifully. Ray, our producer, fell in love with that immediately, and this is also the permanent background picture because we also love yeah. it so much. So this is sort of this, uh, you, so you turn the, 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 the dilemma of flooding cities into the virtue of floating cities, right? Yeah, I mean, this, this is maybe one, one alternative uh, solution that we, we think we, we might have to deal with. Uh, if there's no more land, uh, mm -hmm. then we probably have to to build houses on top of water. Mm -hmm. So this is just an experiment that we try to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So this this is actually a structure on top of styrofoam. Yeah, and thinking which about is, how we which is repurposed, right? Right, it's right. You turn waste into building material. Right. Awesome. So how do you deal with garbage? Exactly. <laughs> sort of uh, recultivating that. And next picture returns to the to the other main issue again. We've been there, you know, the slums, and let's move to the next picture. And I have to apologize because I had the tough job. Yeah, if we can go to the next picture already. I had the tough job. This presentation originally had 65 slides, and I just learned <laughs> you had 225 or 250. So there's way more information. So I basically to weed out. But what I kept is number 14 from the sequence that tells this story here, which I really love about the sort of grass Rudy, uh, that you don't believe in, in, in top down because we don't trust, you know, our leadership, our, you know, our governments, our municipalities to make the changes fast enough, uh, you know, as fast as we need them. But you, you believe and trust in the people to be able sort of from the bottom up sort of grass Rudy, you know, take actions. So that's, yeah, our, our focus of what we are doing is actually dealing with the with the poor, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the main main needs of the poor is actually uh, jobs. Mm -hmm. And what we are working on a lot is actually finding space for for the poor to have space to do to survive. Mm -hmm. And this also triggers into an architecture. Number next picture, number fifteen is is with the same approach, you know, from <clears throat> people-based and human activity and event, you know, that creates appropriate architecture that is not about representation, but that's really the architecture is sort of the facilitation of these actual, you know, fundamental needs. And you, the next picture is, uh, this seems like, you know, a little stuff, but this shows it has high impact because as you very sort of humbly put at the very top right, this has gotten you guys one of the most prestigious awards for architecture in developing countries. The Aga Khan Award for Architecture. Congratulations <laughs> Thank to you. that very much. And let's jump to the next picture here. Again, as we talked before, we want to uh, now walk with a little remaining time we have of 10 minutes. We want to walk through a couple of case studies um, of different kinds, how you basically uh, enable and empower the people to build their own communities, right? Yes, um, this, this picture is another slum. Um, so what we did is actually um, through through uh, community participation, uh, we rearranged uh, their 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 housing because most of their housing doesn't have uh, in sufficient uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So either uh, sanitation. water, sanitation. Mm -hmm. So we did this through what we call land consolidation, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically rearranging uh, land. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we did. Awesome. And that's all participation. Yeah, absolutely, which we see in the next picture um, as well. So the before situation, once again, all the, as people can read, all the problems going with it, but then the next picture is uh, sort of see the, see the potential in that. Yeah, the, the previous uh, picture is, a, is another case. Uh, actually, I showed uh, 12 cases uh, in, the, in the program. Um, but basically, like this case is actually also dealing with the slums, and not only dealing with housing, but the whole, the whole, uh, a holistic view, mm -hmm. uh, including jobs, uh, garbage, uh, water pollution. Uh, so 
So it's, it's, it's a total uh, community development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from bottom up and down from the essentials and, you know, who wants to deal with garbage? But this is one of the fundamental problems that you also turn into an opportunity. And the next page is, I'm very happy because I've been talking about that for quite some while as to incorporate that into the project. Actually, the one that I show at the very end is one of the examples that we came up with where we had exactly the same idea. So tell us more about this. Well, this is this is this is the continuation of the the garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, people look at garbage as something that's not useful. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we try a, a system where garbage can be can be transferred to something useful, which is energy. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to spend money for for mm -hmm. their cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, on the top right side is actually if you we are we are trying to. Uh, uh, produce garbage to become compost, but compost is too cheap to to make a sufficient income from all the efforts. So on top is actually uh, it's like the second generation from garbage. We do uh, seedlings of uh, plants mm -hmm. and we sell the plants, mm -hmm. so we can create more money, income. Very cool, very cool. Let's move on here to the next picture which gets us a little bit more disciplinary here, the show being human-human architecture, although all the <laughs> stuff you've been talking about is also because the fundamentals, and we, we call the systems, right? You gotta yeah. figure out the systems because otherwise you're just basically not being able to handle these sort of living environments. But um, so you're also looking into a sort of typology and materiality and technology and sort of you know learning from the indigenous, from the vernacular, right? Yeah, like this. This picture is. Uh, I mean, most of the case case studies are are all Indonesian mm -hmm. uh, uh, experience. Uh, this case is actually in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, so, basically, if you want to to deal with the poor, we have to think about land. Land is probably the the major issue. Mm -hmm. uh, finance, uh, and in this picture is is probably more uh, the building system. Mm -hmm. Uh, land is probably the most expensive thing to mm -hmm. to solve. Yeah. Uh, but this, in this case, this is a site and service uh, project mm -hmm. uh, using local materials. So it's local plants, uh, beer cans, yeah, uh, and self help. This is a self help housing. Yeah, brings back good this memories. Is a, uh, this is Chris Alexander's uh, project in Mexico. Yeah, no, brings back great memories of my two years in the desert. Yeah, in right. Arizona. Oh and, yeah, right. And Close Rick to Joy and Will Bruder, <laughs> who we'll have as a speaker uh, in our lecture series. So, let's move on to the uh, to the next picture in learning by doing. Right. So you're learning really by sort doing, of teaching yeah. people how to actually so cut right. out capitalism and the middleman and uh, you know the construction Do companies yourself, who, right. who raise the cost and make right. it unaffordable. We are, we are working a lot on, on how communities can build themselves mm -hmm. uh, from, from local build, uh, building mm -hmm. materials. Uh, mm -hmm. And if the government can also provide uh, tools, uh, it's just the philosophy of give them tools uh, for them to be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. So, so that's empower pictures, the people. Yeah, empower right? the people. And the next picture shows uh, another example, the case study where you guys have been doing that. Yeah, this is back to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's about the same thing. We give them a, a tool, a block machine, mm -hmm. and they, they build their own roads, uh, alleys, uh, uh, public bathrooms, and mm -hmm. uh, their mm -hmm. own houses mm -hmm. by just giving them the tool. Exactly. And you're not staying within sort of the more conventional realm of more Western, you know, technology, but you're also next picture are more sort of exploratory, more experimental, right? Right. This is this is back to uh, into Mexico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as you as you title in the first page, you talked about this is in Mexico, this is in U.S., this is in Indonesia, right. because we're basically facing these problems all over the world, and especially you know where capitalism goes gets out of control, right? And we mm -hmm. we are left with the poor uh, in peril. Uh, we we got to be creative and and find ways out of that sort of dilemma and. Your uh, sort of last project picture is the next one, um, which also goes back more to sort of an, an urban scale, right? Right. This this is basically a, a project uh, that we are working on. Uh, 
uh, actually the, the main problem that we have or the poor have is uh, land. Mm -hmm. So we, we have the thought if there's if we have problems with, with land, then when do we build land mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. uh, fighting for it? Mm -hmm. So this is what, what we call the project uh, Land on Land mm -hmm. and let the people build uh, themselves. Exactly. Uh, the, the other thing that it shows in this picture, uh, this is done by, by my friend uh, Yusin, mm -hmm. or oh, you can see there yeah. his name, mm -hmm. uh, is most of the slums uh, uh, problem or solution is to displace them to, to apartments, high-rise high apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, and, and we are proposing for a different kind of uh, solution, which is uh, housing with, it's not only housing, but it's also uh, a place to work, mm -hmm. uh, which is not the case with uh, most of the solution that they have, yeah. uh, the apartments. Very I mean, awesome. this, this is a solution that a lot of uh, countries uh, does. Yeah. Uh, it's just they give, they give the solution only on housing, mm -hmm. but yet the, the problem is also jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very in inclusive, sort of manga-driven approach. And you also do just the necessary that's very familiar to us. We have a lot of emerging architects mm -hmm. that we're you know, working with who do just the framework, the platform, the facilitation. And yes. that's all you need in the tropics, right? You need to be protected from the rain and the sun, but you don't need this enclosure uh, you yeah. know, as much as you need it in temperate climates. Well, we were discussing on, on what we were walking about the, the, the homeless. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. They give them space. And exactly. Let them, yeah. And that's getting back to the end of the show. This is so encouraging, Antonio. I can't even tell you. Getting to the next picture, this is a project we proposed along the same lines where we repurpose mm -hmm. cargo steel, avoiding saying shipping container, but that's what it is. This is one of our contemporary abundant building materials, and many architects have tried to do something. So this is our approach, repurposing that and repurposing uh, Albicia wood and just coming up Looks with... Good. Thank you. And, yeah. and, you know, it has the same, you know, this is one thing, but the sort of the essence of it has the same with you. We were talking about our, uh, you know, cooking is basically all generated, you know, biogas mm -hmm. driven and we repurpose everything and it has the work. So it's, it's the same approach and it's for the same sort of need and necessities of the rising poor here in our sort of very privileged developed uh, culture of Honolulu. And so... We're at the end of the show, but at the, with the last picture, which is a beautiful, uh, very poetic drawing of yours, <laughs> um, beautiful. And I, I want to also send this message, you know, to the emerging architects and do it sort of passionately and poetically, right? I mean, you're <laughs> we're dreamers, but and we want to make you know life better for the people who are really sort of at the lowest, you know, chain of of society. So really. I want to, you know, thank you and congratulate you and keep up that great work and let's stay connected and help each other out in, yes. in various ways. And so thank you very much for your visit and uh, your great uh, projects that you share. And I will now bring you back to your symposium. And thanks again that I was able to steal you away for that little time. <laughs> so yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, if you like the show, um, be back next week, always on Tuesday afternoons, 4 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Human Humane Architecture. And until then, have a great time and help uh, to making our life here better on our islands and everywhere in the world. See you then. Bye-bye.